What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Virtue's Last Reward. Last time, we was a, a ton of dialogue and trying to figure out who killed Alice, but at the very end, we found the dead body of Luna. So, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to investigate, so we need to get back to the warehouse and get through our doors. I wish there was a way to speed these up, these little segments. Kill me? What about Cork? What? Did he find Cork? How the fuck would I know? I've been here. Look, forget about him. Where's Alice's bracelet? Which one of you has it? What about Temyoji and Clover? Have they come back yet? Look around, asshole. What do you think? Hey, pay attention. The bracelet. Do you have Alice's bracelet? Hand it over. Five pulled it out of her pocket. The face still shone with blue light. This had been Alice's bracelet. Five's eyes never left Dio's as she carefully handed the bracelet to Kay. Good. Let's go. Hey, what is this? What, you don't like this door? Fine, we can take a different one. As long as we're in the right group, it shouldn't matter which door we take. That's not the issue. Then please tell me, what the fuck is the issue? Being a human being, three of us still haven't arrived. If we leave them behind... Oh, come on! Now you're gonna grow a heart? If you stay here, you're gonna kill me! But... Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Alright. Fine. I'll be honest with you. The truth is, I've got a kid. A baby. I was told that if I didn't win this game, my kid's as good as dead. That's... You have to trust me. I swear, it's God's honest truth. Zero told me to keep it under wraps, but I figure I don't have a lot of choice right now. I'll tell you more once we get inside. Please. It's a lie. Don't listen to him. I wanted to scream. Dio was obviously lying, but it looked like Kay was buying it. But he had to go in. I couldn't try and stop him. If I did, they'd both die. You have to believe me, Kay. Please. If you won't do it for me, do it for my kid. If I lose, it's all over, please. Kay turned to look at me and Vi. We both nodded silently back. I understand. Let's go. Really? Yes. I have one condition, however. A condition? Yes. But it's not for you, Dio. Kay's a big softy. Sigma, I want you and Vi to go into one of the doors as well. Huh? Dio and I cannot be the only survivors. I would have the two of you join us. That is my condition. Damn it. Couldn't make this easy, could you? What do you say? The decision is yours. No. I can't do that. You're asking me to leave three people to die. Use your fucking head for once. You're gonna get us killed. Is that what you want? I can't just leave them behind. Me either. I agree with Sigma. We can't just ditch them. I'm staying. Bunch of fucking idiots. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. I see. I suspected that would be your answer. You leave me with no choice then. My apologies. Huh? And he karate chops us. my 
my sympathy. I wish there was another way. Do you actually believe, Dio? No, of course not. I only wish to save you. If I had not forced the issue, neither of you would have budged. Such is your character. What are you doing? I confess I am not entirely sure. I will think about it during the 10 seconds that remain. Goodbye. Kay turned and left, quickly disappearing outside of our door. Find I lay on the floor moaning, curled around our aching stomachs. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. Not quite able to walk yet, find I crawled out of the secondary door. The punch Kay had given me had been incredibly powerful and my arms and legs still felt numb and tingly. Can you stand? Yeah. Can we just... sit here for a moment, though? My body's gonna be fine, but I think I need a little time to get my feelings sorted out. I nodded and we sat there in silence. No matter what I did, I couldn't get their faces out of my head. Ten Myoji, Clover, Quark. I hoped they were alright, somehow, but... I wasn't sure how much time had passed before Feist finally stood up. We should go. And that was it. She turned and headed for the end of the hallway, feet dragging as if she were carrying something heavy. It was a moment or two before I followed. Did you see the plaque on the door? Yeah. It said security. The footage from the surveillance cameras might run through here. Does that mean we'll be able to see what's going on in the rest of the facility? I'm not sure. Right now, all the screens are dark. Even if we could activate them, I doubt Zero is just gonna let us watch whatever we want. Yeah, I'm just worried about them. We don't know what happened to Kay and Dio either. Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do here. Okay, let's see what we've got. It's not a very large room, but there are many things to interact with, so let's just choose something. This must be the main monitoring station. All nine of the screens are dark, though. Probably aren't powered up. Looks like it. So, how do we turn them on? What kind of a question is that? There's probably some switch or something around here somewhere. Hmm. I just rubbed it a little and it turned on. <laughs> yeah, it did. I don't think the rest is going to be that easy, though. Look at the screen. Oh, the actual... Okay, the password screen. Looks like a login screen. I think we need to put in a password. Okay, I'll give it a shot. No, I will not, because I don't know what it is. Let's look around. Maybe we can find some kind of clue. Right. A long console. There's a screen in the middle. Okay. Hmm. This one's the same. I barely touched it, and it's ready to go. Yeah, it is. It's showing the same thing, too. That's a big screen. Blank, though. I don't think the power's on. Okay. Looks like we've got nine switches. There's a little Thunderbolt icon up here. My guess is these are a bunch of power switches. They're all red. Does that mean they're all off? How about you try and flip some? Did you hear something? Yeah, I did. Kind of a starting up sound. Okay. 
Okay. Is this a lion? What's it got in its mouth? It's some kind of button, right? It looks like you can push it. I can barely make it out, but I think there's something carved on the surface. A sun. So is this the lion eating the sun? Whatever. Right now we need to focus on getting out of here. I'm gonna push that button. That okay? Sure. Whoa! The light turned off. I guess it's a light switch. Uh... Hourglass with red sand. With four. Hourglass with yellow with 11. A strange looking set of shelves. Check it out. It's all lit up. Pretty colorful. You think it's a hint? Maybe. Okay. The shelves are lit up. Okay. Ooh! These are from the security cameras. I thought so. What about 10 Miyoji Clover and Cork? Can you see them anywhere? You can see just as well as I can. There's nobody there. No Dio or K either. Might as well take a good look at it though. Nothing. Hmm. Password. What about this one? Darkness? Okay, I don't care about the chair. Switched on like the other two. Looks like it. Okay, but it requires a password, which I obviously don't have. This is pointless. It's too dark for me to see anything. Ah, damn. Okay. Let's go turn it back on then. Oh, hi. Colors associated with each step. Okay. Um, uh, is there an easy way to do this for me? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll take a picture with my phone. I don't know why I never did that before. This is obviously too much. Okay, hold on. Take a picture. Okay. So I don't know how this is going to be relevant yet, but we have lots of red, purple, teal, or cyan, yellow, green, blue. So we've got those. All right, what else do we have? The shelves, which are off. The power switch. The security cameras. I wonder what this is. Dunno. Looks like a machine of some kind. Okay. I'm running out of things to uh, interact with here. Binders. Can't understand a word of this. Looks like some kind of code. All these binders are like that. Um. This isn't good. What do I do with these? Okay. Perhaps I'm supposed to... A set of shelves that make up hexagons and triangles. They light up when you turn off the room lights. Yet I can't seem to put these anywhere. Okay. Door there, and this is probably the door we came through. Yep. The power switches. Which might be helpful... Oh! The colors of the chairs! Oh, I see, I see. Alright, let's start with this one then. Whew, I was running out of clues too. Okay, this one needs a password. It's red. So let's go with what was on the red, which was T M J Y U V 
G, J. Awesome. Okay. Did it work? I guess so. Good job. Cakewalk. Sure. Did you see this icon? The one in the upper left corner. Yeah? Wonder what this icon means. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Very true. Change the colors to the correct ones by selecting the hexagons and triangles. Only have four moves. I see. Ah. Okay, okay. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I... I, I could remember what it looked like on the, um... On the wall, I just couldn't figure out how to get to the proper pattern. It was just lots of trial and error. How do you like that, puzzle? It's too early to celebrate. Check your screen. You've got a new icon. What was that noise? Nothing happened on screen. Look up. The one over your head. What the hell's that? It's not even a sentence. Will be me. All right, well, let's move on to the next one. So yellow. Yellow being S. G. D. Q. N. Y. This one's done too. Same result as before. And another icon up in the corner. Is this icon supposed to be an hourglass? Touch it and find out. Right. Determine the value in seconds for each hourglass, then fill in the blanks. Oh boy, okay. The hours in each, or the seconds in each glass? Is it as simple as I think it is? One, two, wait, blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, this is, can't be this easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, that's what I thought. We gotta figure out how much time it takes for an entire hourglass. Well, actually, I just answered myself. It's an hour. So this this is half an hour. That's thirty minutes. And there are one, two, three. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen lines. So each line is two minutes. So starting with here, one, two, three, four. That's eight. Blue is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen. It's really hard for me to count how many there are. Green, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen. Yellow. Twenty-two and thirty. Oh, sixty! Oh gosh, darn it! Uh, it! It wanted it in seconds, didn't it? Can you? Can you? The instructions? Ah. Oh. Okay, so this is four, which means it's two minutes. Two minutes is one hundred and twenty seconds. Wait, hold on. An hourglass full of yellow sand that has 11 carved into its top. Are you telling me it's 11 ticks or 11 hours? Uh. Okay, so that's at four seconds and yellow is 11 seconds. Four seconds, 11 seconds. Wait, 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 which ones? Red four, uh, red four, red four, yellow 11. Ugh. Red four, yellow eleven. Red. Ugh. Four. 
Yell. Eleven. God. Sec. Okay. So even if we can use those to determine these, how do you figure out the other colors? Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell? Wait a minute, what? Oh, I see. So if this, if red, if red is four seconds, oops. If red is four seconds, then green is eight seconds. Green is eight seconds. Shoot, I shouldn't have taken up so much space. Eight. Okay. Four, eight. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Four, eight. 12, 16. Oh shoot, it's not 16. What the heck? It's some other number. Ah! All right, hold on, hold on. Let me do, let me take care of blue. Four over, oh Jesus, okay. Blue is seven. Green is nine. Yellow is 11. Pink is 15. Oh my god. Not bad. It only took you like an hour to figure this out. Yay. Well, I, it wasn't an hour, but... All I know is that I'm tired and I hate this room now because of that one puzzle, so yay. Look! The screen's changed! Ugh, oh, even my eyes hurt. What the heck is this? There's a different word on each one. I'd guess we're supposed to shuffle them around until they make a sentence. How? Well, look at that screen underneath. It's got the same words in the nine squares. So I'm supposed to use that console to move them around. That'd be my guess. Okay, let's give this a shot. Um. Me. Um. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, shut up, shut up, shut up. The other one was, will be me, okay. See if we can figure this out with what little tools we have. Okay, 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 okay. Over here. Come on. Will be me. Ah, man, okay, hold on. Damn it, I need the other one. It's, it's too vague. So many pronouns. All right, green. Okay, we're back to the green thingy again. All right. So, the green was a D. Oops. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. A D G B. Okay, please don't be particularly difficult. Oh, it's another one of the color ones. Okay. That wasn't so bad last time. Um. Oh shit, nope, nope, nope. Oh! Oh, okay. Wow, I actually wasn't trying very hard. I just, okay.
What are you doing? This is just like the other one. I was you. I... Okay, okay, okay. Ah, oh, keep doing that. Stop, 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 stop. I was you. I was you. Will be me. She knows everything. Right? Is, is this not, not, is this not it? Will it tell me? Um, it could be a different order, I suppose. Um, I was, you will be me? No? Um, I was, you will be me. She knows everything. I was you will be me. Maybe some of these words aren't necessary. Nine of those. Um, I was you will be me. Oh, shoot. It starts in the default order. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. I was you. I was you. Will be me. I was you. Will be me. I was you. Will be. Okay, so I just don't need this. Okay. I got it. I got it. I was you will be me. No? Is this really not it? Is it? Um, what the? Oh, I didn't know you can move the black. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> just as I thought. Looks like you got it. Good work. <laughs> Nothing's changed though. Well, at least not here. Take a look at the screen on the wall. This is... I've been waiting for this. A new safe password, huh? Let's go open it. You found a safe password viewed in the pass archive. Okay. The pass archive. Sun... Star Sun. Sun, Star, Sun. Okay, come on, come on. Sun. Ah, oh, shoot, I already forgot it. I think this is it? Okay. Excellent. It opened. Different image. It's one of the AB room cards. I guess there are two of them, actually. These are the star keys the announcer was talking about. And then we've got the same key as usual. Okay, let's get going. All right, so that means I got the regular escape one. So instead, why don't we try... Wait. Oh, it must be the power switch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are these off now? That's what I thought. So the only only other sentence structure you could make was she knows everything. So if I can just... Okay, yep, yep, yep. All right, let's just do... Nope. 
No? Okay, why, why the last one? Why couldn't I just do it anywhere? Sun, moon, moon. Sun, moon, moon. Sun, moon, moon. Sun, moon, moon. It opened. So it did. Alright, to the secrets! Um... Holy moly. Okay. Floor B Graffiti. Memento Mori. If the ninth lion ate the sun. It appears to have been written in some sort of weird paint. Memento Mori is a Latin phrase that translates roughly to remember death, mortality. Ninth clearly refers to ninth, but seems to have been spelled wrong. Likely on purpose. Why? Perhaps it's an anagram like the words on the wall on the floor. A warehouse. If it is, what does this one mean? The hourglass displayed in the background is actually a four second timer. It doesn't have much practical use except maybe for really impatient people. If you're at a restaurant waiting for your food to come out, for instance, how long are you gonna make me wait? I've already flipped this hourglass 100 times. Technically, 100 times would only be 400 seconds, which is six minutes and 40 seconds, but saying 100 times is much more dramatic. These are a measure of how much of a gentleman you are. Somewhere deep in the United Kingdom is an organization that tracks all gentlemen, determining their caliber based off an ancient and Byzantine collection of rules and guidelines. I didn't know that. Every year during the spring, a representative of this organization conducts a cursory investigation of each member's behavior, or at least appears to, and then awards gentle points based on what they saw. The following formula is used. Old ladies escorted across the street. Top hats owned. Puzzles solved. Money given to gentlemen tracking organization. Are you serious? It's just like the same thing. This is why Layton is a gentleman? Layton is literally a gentleman because he has all these gentle points. That's unbelievable. Top hats. Puzzle solved. Puzzle solved? For a gentleman? A small survival knife. It has myrmidons stamped into the flat of the blade. There's blood on it, but whose blood? Okay, myrmidons. Several of the hallways on floor B use special locks. Indicated on the map of air by arrows, on the far side of each arrow is a lever. Pulling these will unlock the locks. Once this has been done, you can explore the entire area. Ooh, okay, so the principle of causality has a lot of stuff. The law of cause and effect, specifically that a cause must precede every effect. At the quantum level, however, things aren't quite as immutable. The principle of quantum superposition holds that any physical system, such as an electron, exists at least partially in all of its theoretical states or configurations, but when measured, gives a result corresponding to only one of them. A classic example of this is the double-slit experiment, where light appears to behave as both a wave and a particle. One of the interesting implications of this is that, in a sense, you are influencing the past. By observing a system, you are defining the cause of an effect you witness, and, in a way, altering the past. Normally, I would comment here that the quantum level is where shit gets real. But given the nature of this phenomenon, it seems like it would be more accurate to say that the quantum level is where the shit gets unreal. Knox's Ten Commandments. Ronald Knox, a mystery writer from the UK, published the following as his rules for writing a mystery novel. The criminal must be mentioned early on. All supernatural or preternatural agencies are ruled out. No more than one secret room or passage. No hitherto undiscovered poisons may be used, nor any appliance which will need a long scientific explanation. No one with extrasensory perception or similar powers can appear. No accident must ever help the detective, nor must he have ever have an unaccountable intuition which proves to be right. The detective must not commit the crime. The detective must declare any clues he may discover. The stupid friend of the detective, the Watson, must conceal nothing from the reader. Twin brothers and doubles generally must not appear unannounced. That was fun. All right, let's get out of here.
the lock for the door. It says lock. You ready? Of course I am. Get on with it. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wait, I just realized something. What's that? When we were looking at the security footage earlier, we were just looking for live feeds. We were trying to figure out where the others are, what they were up to, if they were alive, and so on. But we totally forgot that security systems like this can do more than show you live footage. Are you following me? You're talking about stuff that's been recorded. Footage of the past. If they store that, we might be able to see it. Yeah. I don't know how much luck we'll have, but it's worth a shot. Definitely. What do we do? Leave that to me. You know how to use this thing? Well, it was designed so that a human could operate it. That means there's a logic to how it's set up. A computer computes, a calculator calculates, and an automobile mobiles. Everything's designed to do something. And once you know what, you can start guessing how. Once you start to figure out how to get it to do things, it's just a question of playing with it until it does the things you want it to. See? Monitoring video data. Looks like this is it. Good work. Knock it off. Makes it sound like you're better than me or something. Wait. What the heck is this? Everything says no data. Hmm. Uh, let's check the log. Damn it. This isn't good. Looks like all the video data was removed before we got here. By zero? That would be my guess. All it says here is administrator. Damn. Well, that's a little frustrating. That footage could have told us a lot. Yeah. It might have given us what we need to figure out who the killer is, too. The camera in room two in the crew quarters would have recorded what happened to Alice and Luna. Same for the old woman in the warehouse. And if there was a recording of us being carried into the AB rooms, we could have even figured out who Zero Senior is. Bond Senior. What's this? It? it says Gollum status. That should be the system logs of those robots. I told you about them in the pantry, remember? Yeah. You mean the room full of robots on the other side of the green door? Yeah. Here we go. Shoot. Everything here's been erased too. Looks like it. I guess there isn't anything we can... Wait a second. What is it? There's a scroll bar. Try scrolling. I knew it. That golem we met is still functional. What do you mean? I thought you told me Gollum, or whatever his name was, started spitting smoke and keeled over. Yeah, but he said that his... What passes for a golem's brain, I guess, was in the main computer. Only his body was disabled. His brain is still probably still functioning. Can we see his logs? Already on it. Here you are. Then, hmm. Try the one that says cash. Hmm. These file names all just seem like random characters. Whatever. Just pick one and open it, I guess. Sure. This is... That's what I thought. This is probably from right after Kay decked us. We'll be tossed into that white door on the left in a minute. Just watch. See? Interesting. This is the footage the Gollum pulled from the main server. The original data was deleted, but it looks like the stuff he pulled is still here. Exactly. So, if we go back through these files... We might be able to figure out who the killer is. Nice. Great work, Sigma. Come on, I told you I don't need you kissing my ass. Besides, it's not like I really did anything. We started going through the rest of the files. 
The security footage showed Kay and Dio clearly passing through the white door on the far right. Good. Looks like they're both fine. <laughs> that just leaves ten Myoji, Clover, and Quark. I opened my mouth to continue, and then it happened. My vision suddenly blurred, and shaking my head did nothing to clear it. I staggered, my balance gone. Why is she talking like that? She sounds like someone's playing a tape of her voice all sped up. What's going on here? I can't understand what she's saying. And why is she moving so fast? It's like watching a video on fast forward. What the hell's... Wait. Could it be me? Maybe my brain's slowing down somehow. So it just looks like everything's speeding up. I still couldn't make out what she was saying, so I just nodded weakly. My eyes drifted shut as I tried to sort out what was happening. I woke up several minutes later. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was the ceiling of the security office. I sat up slowly, rubbing tenderly at my head. Fi, who had been sitting in front of one of the monitors, stood up and walked over as soon as she heard me move. You okay? Her voice sounded normal again. And she wasn't moving strangely either. Whatever had been happening seemed to have stopped. I let out a quiet sigh. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You sure? That's good. You really looked like you'd lost it for a minute there. Well, I seem to have found it again. This is the security office. Maybe they've got it lost and found. Your sanity's pretty easy to miss. I'm surprised anyone found it, let alone turned it in. Well, looks like I don't have anything to worry about. Yep. I think I must just be getting tired. Kind of surprised it didn't catch up to me sooner. I hope that's all it is. You haven't... caught a disease or something, have you? For just a moment, I thought of Radical Six, but I didn't want to worry Fi if I didn't have to. Better to stay quiet about it. Well, you're looking a lot better, so I can stop worrying, right? What are you, my mom? Fine. No more check-ins. Anyway, I figured something out while you were resting. Come have a look at this. What is it? Footage from room two in the crew quarters. The room where we found Alice and Luna. I dug it out of Gollum's cache. When was this recorded? We'll see you in a minute. Up there on the right, that looks like some sort of time code. Can you figure it out? No, it's just a bunch of numbers. I can't make heads or tails. Yeah, the central server seems to be using its own time system. Files appear to be named based on that system. They might as well be random to you and me. Which made it pretty hard to find this gem. Oh, it's Kay. Yeah. He looked at his bracelet here. Probably checking how much time's left. I'll just pause that and magnify it. 21 minutes. So that means this footage is from 21 minutes before the primary doors opened. Exactly. And that would have been the white doors in this case. Yes. After Kay leaves this room, it's about two minutes before he comes back with you and me. There were 20 minutes on the clock when we met up with him, right? So that means what we're seeing here is Kay one minute before he saw us. Right. That means this is right after he tried to resuscitate Luna. Yeah, if you believe him. The footage here doesn't show any of that. Are there any other angles? I looked around, but I couldn't find one. The only stuff left is shot from this position. Even so... I think we've gotten our hands on something important. You mean that this is a record of what happened right around the time of Luna's death? Exactly. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I'll move back to the start of this file so we can see it in chronological order. Let's say this is zero hours, zero minutes. After all, it's not like we know what time it actually is. Right. So... This is the start of our footage. There's no one here. Yeah. About a minute goes by before anyone shows up. How do you know it's been a minute? This. Oh, that's the hourglass we used earlier. Yeah. If I play it back at normal speed, 
I can measure time using this hourglass. Then I just add the time from the hourglass, and that's how far in we are. Huh? Oh. Someone's coming in. Luna. Is that Clover behind her? Yeah. This is zero hours, one minute. Right now, you and I are talking to Dio in the Floor B warehouse. With the time frame we've established, calculating what we're doing is pretty easy. What's going on? Are they fighting? Mm, no, it's not really a fight. It looks like Clover's just going off on Luna. Luna's just staying silent and listening to her. Yeah. Can we hear them? Is there any audio track? Want to listen to it? What the hell is this? Don't know. The audio data must have been transcoded into something else. Well, we won't be able to understand anything in that. Seen enough? I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Clover's interrogation goes on for a while, but it's all pretty much the same thing. Now, at zero hours, ten minutes, things suddenly change. Here. They're gone. As I watched, Clover move steadily close to Luna, who backed away almost as if she were frightened. Clover continued her advance until she disappeared below the bottom edge of the screen. Is there another? Oh, no, you said this was it. Yeah. This is the only one that I found. Shouldn't be too hard to guess what happened after you've seen the next part, though. Clover left. She looked like she was kind of panicking. Yeah. This is about a minute and 40 seconds after they both left the frame. So zero hours, 11 minutes, 40 seconds. Only Clover left. Luna's still in the room. That means... Hold on. Wait until you've seen the whole thing before you start deducing. At zero hours, 12 minutes, another person comes in just missing her. Dio. He's disappeared too. Down below the bottom of the frame. What's he up to? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that whatever it was, he doesn't want us to know about it. Why? Remember what he said when you asked him about Quark? How the fuck would I know? I've been here. You're saying he was lying. He wasn't in the Floor B warehouse the whole time. He went to the crew quarters after we left him. Yeah. So what would have been important enough for him to lie about it? We should consider that it might have been something bad. And whatever it was, it happened during this time. Yeah, I think so. All right, now he's left. And it looks like he left in a hurry. Maybe he heard a noise. Like what? The cyan door opening. Now, ten seconds after Dio leaves, a fourth person shows up. That brings us to zero hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. It's K. When he heard K open the cyan door, he panicked. Whatever he was up to, we didn't want K to catch him at it. And then K disappears too. Yeah, below the bottom of the frame, just like the others. If K was telling the truth, this is where he begins to try and resuscitate Luna. Anyway, nothing happens for the next 16 minutes. It's just... this. So I'll fast forward, alright? Sure. Alright. Should be around here. One sec. Okay. You should see something you recognize in a minute here. There's Kate coming in from the bottom of the frame. And he's checking the time on his bracelet. So we've come full circle. Yeah. We're back to 21 minutes before the primary doors open. For our arbitrary time code, that's 0 hours and 29 minutes. One minute later, at 0 hours 30 minutes, K heads to the Floor A warehouse. Once he gets there, he'll tell us about Luna's death. That's all the footage I wanted to show you. I've looked at it carefully. And I think it has something to tell us. 
You mean, who killed Luna, right? Well, I can't say for sure. This footage makes for pretty shaky evidence. But it does suggest a very likely culprit. Who do you think it is? I ran over the footage in my head. Zero hours, one minute. Clover and Luna enter the room. For nine minutes, Clover aggressively questions Luna. Ten minutes, they both move out of the frame. Eleven minutes and forty seconds, Clover exits the room. Twelve minutes, Dio enters the room. Dio also immediately exits the frame. Seems likely that Dio was up to no good during this period. Thirteen minutes, Dio exits. Thirteen minutes, ten seconds, K enters. K also disappears. At this point, there are sixteen minutes where nothing happens. Twenty-nine minutes, K enters the frame. He looks at his bracelet. It says 21 minutes, the remaining time until the primary doors open. There seems to be only one conclusion. The person who killed Luna is... Clover. What makes you think so? Luna could still have been alive after Clover left the room. Dio and Kay both went into the room after Clover. Either of them could have killed Luna too. That footage alone isn't enough to tell us who the killer is. But if we take one other thing into account, then the case against Clover gets a lot stronger. And what is that element? Dio's behavior at the white doors. Hmm. Kay wanted us to enter the white doors. I told him I wouldn't leave three people to die. Do you remember what Dio said? Use your fucking head for once. You're gonna get us killed. He obviously knew that only you and I would be going through the door. Do you get it? Yeah. He knew he had Luna's bracelet, which means he also knew Luna was dead. Is that what you're getting at? Exactly. If he didn't know she was dead, he would never have said that. The moment Kay suggested we go through the doors, he would have brought it up. That's impossible. How are they supposed to get through without Luna? But he didn't even mention her. Like he didn't expect her to be there. Why would he do that? I can only think of two reasons. One, that when Dio entered that room, Luna was already dead. Or two, he killed Luna himself. The second one doesn't seem likely though. If Dio had killed Luna, he probably would have made a point to hide it. I'm guessing he probably would have asked where she was. Where's Luna? Sigma and Phi won't be able to get through the white doors without her. He seems like the kind of guy who'd go out of his way to feign ignorance of a crime he committed. In this case, though, he said nothing. That doesn't clear him, of course, but it does make it a lot less likely that he was the killer. If he wasn't the killer, then we're left with only one other option. When Dio entered the room, Luna was already dead. That's how I see it. Interesting. That's pretty much what I thought, too. But it does seem like Clover had a motive. You mean what Alice noticed? Yes. The movement of the AB rooms convinced Alice that Luna had killed the old woman. Once Clover realized that, she probably started to think that Luna had killed Alice to keep her from telling anyone else the truth. She probably led Luna to the crew quarters to confront her. Maybe she hoped seeing Alice's corpse would cause Luna to confess. Maybe she knew something we don't. But Clover didn't get what she wanted. Luna didn't confess. Then, during her interrogation, something happened. It's hard to say what. Luna might have said something that set Clover off. Or, maybe she admitted to a crime she didn't commit just to get Clover to stop. Whatever it was, something happened that drove Clover to murder. When did Clover get the injection gun? I would guess after she went through the yellow door, she would have been exploring the infirmary with Alice and Kay. That seems the most likely place to find it. Anyway, this is all just a theory, right? We don't have any proof, so keep it quiet, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, there was one last thing. Was there any other footage that showed anything? No, nothing to tell us where Clover, Tenmyoji, and Quark went. And nothing about the old woman or Alice's murders either. So Zero Senior's identity. Still unknown. Okay, well, let's go find Clover. 
And with that, we cleared this room, had an interesting discussion about what may have happened to Luna, and I'm gonna end this video here. It's probably gonna be between 30 to 50 minutes. I'm not entirely sure. So stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!